Welcome. I am John Halcyon Stin, and it is such a gift to spend this moment with you. Today's topic is the courage to face small discomforts. I realized that in some ways it can be easier to face grand problems than it is small ones. It can be easier to summon up the courage to go into battle against big demons, big dragons, big foes or, or obstacles in your life. Because that's part of what we train for. I think about like for me to go on stage and tell a story or to to recite some talk to a big audience is something that I actually I, I have the tools and I have the experience and it's something that it doesn't psych me out. It's something that, that I start to kind of you know, I, I, I enjoy, I appreciate. Yes, there's elements of nervousness, but it's the entire process gets me pumped up and I, 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 I thrive, I love it. But there are other experiences that would seem to be so small and minor and insignificant and yet totally psych me out. It's like the, the huge broadsword I have no problem ducking for, but the tiny paper cuts is what eventually takes me down. I had an experience this last week. We had a networking event in our office that turned out to be a much more significant and cool thing than I realized was going to be. The Ventura mayor was here, there was an assembly woman here, there was all sorts of leaders of local businesses that were here. And it was supposed to be 5.30 to 7.30 and kind of people would show up whenever. And so I was expecting a trickle of people. And at 5.25, this place was packed. Our office was full of people. There was catering and there was people and there was name tags and there was this loud murmur of socializing. And I was at my desk like... <sighs> and I was totally psyched out. And I totally was hiding. And I totally didn't want to go out there. And I got a text from... Michael, the CEO, saying, are you going to come shake hands with me? And I was like, yes. And I was super aware of how uncomfortable I was and how kind of, how much fear, you know, like, it was like, it was like, because this was not a, a big deal and these were like, it didn't, it somehow bypassed the, the, my defense mechanisms and the fear got into me deeply. And so I was really, I was, I, I, was, I, I was doing a pretty poor job of socializing and I was kind of, I would say, hi, welcome, thank you, hi, welcome. You know, and hi, hello, I'm John, welcome, hi. And, and at some point, I introduced myself to a, this group of people and I was, I said, hi, Hi, I'm John, John. Welcome. And and this man said, with a, with a big smile on his face, was like, oh, come on! Really? And I was like, oh. He was, he's like, the hug guy is going to give me a handshake? And instantly I was like, this this kind of, this like, this rush of awareness and like remembering kind of went through me. And... <laughs> And I gave him a big hug, and it turns out he was a spouse of somebody that I work with, and so he was familiar with me and videos that I do and things that I do, and so he was eager to meet me, not network with somebody, some professional contact and do networking. He wanted to meet me. And the woman next to him apparently is a friend of someone in the company and so had seen episodes of Goodness Gracious and was very aware of who I am and was also wanted to meet me and not, you know, schmooze. And and she said something, and I'm not sure exactly how she said it, but she said, you're trying to be something instead of just being. And I was like, oh my gosh, exactly. And I, it's like this, this lifelong practice that I feel pretty good about when I face the big dragons, when, I, when I'm going into a big, a big scenario of a, of a life challenge. I feel like 
I confidently can stand on the mountaintop and be me. But in these subtle, smaller, discomforting ways, I lost my footing. I lost my truth. I lost sight of the mantra that gets me through the big battles because for some reason it didn't occur to me that it would also help me through these small scenarios. Be present, have integrity, align with love. For some reason, it didn't occur to me that the thing that can save me during the avalanche can also help me out, you know, getting, getting ice off the windshield. And so in this moment of, of being called on it, going, come on, come on, I know who you are. It was almost like this, a way of saying like, namaste, like I see you, I know who you are. You're not just an executive who's trying to schmooze, you're you. Not that there's anything wrong with being an executive who's trying to schmooze, if that's who you are, if you're being who you are. And in this scenario, in this place, I was pretending, and in the pretending, I was struggling. And it goes back to the whole, the whole reason why be present, have integrity, align with love is such a helpful mantra for me because in the difference between being and pretending to be something is that pretending to be something takes massive amount of effort. It requires a constant like checking in and trying to do and trying to make sure, am I doing this? Am I doing that right? Do I, am I appearing like this? Am I looking like that? Am I saying this right? Am I, uh, uh, you know, Whereas being is effortless. Being is sinking into the truth of who you are and trusting that that truth, if it is allowed to just surface and be, will be received perfectly. If someone has a problem with it, well, that has nothing to do with you. That's like someone disliking the fragrance of a flower. Are you going to be angry at the flower for the smell it makes or angry at the color of it? That's crazy. If you dislike that flower, whatever. You're not going to blame the flower for that. And if you dislike someone who is simply being, it's kind of ridiculous. And I realized that while life sometimes is these many well, these occasional big battles, it's the frequent little encounters that I now need to really put my energy into and really focus my warrior's path on. In, in, in being, being in these smaller interactions, in being in the small things like a phone call and because I get psyched out in these small things. I forget to be and instead get too caught up into, into supposed to be something. And I get psyched out about making phone calls. I get psyched out about meeting someone at a network event. It's like I will happily introduce myself on a stage to a thousand people. I get real nervous saying hello to someone in a coffee shop. Isn't that weird? When it's the exact same principle that should guide it. And so I'm reminded of the Shakespeare Julius Caesar quote that a coward dies a thousand deaths and a hero dies just once. And in this last week, I've had these scenarios where by not wanting to face these tiny, tiny, uh, you know, obstacles, these tiny sufferings, these tiny little, like, teeny tiny discomforts. Because I didn't want to face it, it became a, 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 a it just kept t knocking at me, knocking at me a thousand times, knocking at me every time that I remembered that I didn't do that. And then it had guilt about it. And then I did knocking at me, knocking at me. Whereas if I just would have made the phone call, if I just would have answered the phone when the person called me, if I just would have walked into the room and introduced myself, I could have been a hero. I could have faced all of the obstacles in the same way that 
I face a dragon. So my path, or my lesson this week is about having the courage to face the small, small things. And having the courage to be instead of trying to be something. The concept of big and small is, is all relative to my human perception, but it's all, it's, all the, it's all the same in the eyes of the cosmos and the eyes of the grand mystery of, of everything. And so it just becomes a reminder that our practice is the small things. Our practice is the tiny tasks. Our practice is the encounters with the clerk and at the networking event, not just facing our adversary or our, our lover or it's, it's the big things, it's the small things. God is in the details and the classroom of life is in every step. So thank you universe for this reminder of how every breath is part of this experience and that mastering something in one venue doesn't mean you don't need to practice it the next day in a different venue and just because you can lift a hundred pounds today doesn't mean you can lift a hundred pounds tomorrow and forgiveness of self is important too. So I forgive myself for being such a schmo at that networking event. And I am grateful for the gentleman who called me out and forced me to look at myself and see what I needed to learn. And I hope that you, in your steps, in your facing of obstacles, in your daily tasks, have the wisdom to forgive yourself and to push yourself and to see that you are a warrior every step of the way. <sighs> so thank you for allowing me to recalibrate and step into my warrior self. I encourage you to step into your warrior self and we will illuminate the paths of one another as we step into our highest selves. So, thank you. I love you. Let's have a hug. Grab yourself by the shoulders. Let's oh. have gratitude for this body, this incredibly functioning machine that just rejuvenates itself and repairs itself and turns food into fuel and somehow somehow keeps itself thriving and running and giving you access to all the amazing things on this fertile planet such sights such smells such tastes such emotions what a gift but this shell that experiences it all is not who we truly are beneath that our personality our labels the roles we play which gives us context to enjoy the journey. It gives us a, a jersey color so that we know which direction to dribble the ball and where we're supposed to score. But in the end of the day, that's just the game. Beneath that, beneath the physical shell, beneath the role we play, that's who we really are. That perfect, glowing, loving light that shines through us. And it shines through everyone. And so as we go through the world, let's remember that everyone has that light shining through them. And if we get caught up in our shells clacking against each other, let's try to forgive the other person and people. And let's try to forgive ourselves. Let's try to see them and see ourselves as that bright light. Even if they don't see it themselves. And let's just for three breaths, let's breathe as that light just shining through us. And let's just visualize the entire world as billions of these lights this entire planet lit up like another sun three breaths in through the nose out through the mouth
On behalf of Grandpa Caleb and all the Love Warriors, Happy Hug Nation.